So the launch of second generation Ryzen CPUs has been very smooth sailing so far. We're getting a nice performance boost over first generation and the overall stability of the platform definitely has a lot of users rejoicing. In this video, however, I wanna dive a little bit deeper into the actual boost clock performance of these second generation Ryzen CPUs, as I feel like some of the marketing lingo like Sense MI or Precision Boost or XFR, for example, has a lot of people sort of scratching their heads into what this actually does does in terms of CPU boost clock performance and what actually happens to the CPU frequencies. More so, I feel like the max boost frequency that comes printed on the box can be a bit misleading to some PC building beginners and perhaps even intermediates. And so the goal of today is to take one of these new processes through a few different workloads and see exactly what the behavior of that boost clock is. The CPU that we're looking at specifically is the R7-2700X, AMD's flagship mainstream CPU, which has a base frequency of 3.7 gigahertz and a max boost of 4.3 gigahertz. Taking XFR2 into account, the actual max boost is 4.35 gigahertz, but we'll see later whether that spec means anything at all. Going off AMD's website, this processor packs two frequency boosting technologies, Precision Boost 2 and XFR2. Now, to dumb these two terms down a little bit, Precision Boost 2 is simply your CPU's boost clock with 25 megahertz intervals that also changes depending on the load that it's going through. XFR, on the other hand, short for extended frequency range, takes whatever your boost clock is and adds up to 50 megahertz if your CPU is cooled appropriately. And in my testing, the threshold seems to be right around the 70 degree mark. Once you go beyond that, the CPU will drop by about 50 megahertz and we'll see that in action a little bit later. First though, a quick word on the test system and the applications that we're testing. The motherboard used is the X470 Gaming M7 from MSI. For memory, we're using our standard kit of 16 gigabyte, 3200 MHz Vengeance LPX memory from Corsair. And more importantly, I did decide to use the stock Wraith Prism cooler for these tests for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I wanted to let the 2700X get a little bit warm under load and see just where XFR starts to shut off. And secondly, it is after all what you get in the box and unlike the trash that you receive from Intel, this cooler is probably worth using. And lastly, the software that we're using to log the clock speed is Hardware Info 64, which I've set to log every 200 milliseconds. Okay, now with that out of the way, let's start with our torture workload in Prime95 to see how the 2700X handled that. This is the most demanding workload of the bunch today, simulating as much heat as possible. So if anything, we can expect lower boost frequencies here for a couple of reasons. Firstly, because the CPU is going to be getting quite hot. And secondly, because all eight cores are fully utilized. You can see at the start of the graph before the torture workload starts, the clock speed is pretty much all over the place. And this is pretty much what you'll see in the coming tests. The clock speed will boost as high as 4.25 gigahertz here while one or two cores are handling background tasks at a time, while the rest of the cores idle at as low as 2.6 gigahertz. When the workload starts, the 2700X pins all eight cores to 3.9 gigahertz, but as it starts to heat up, we do see that drop by about 25 megahertz. The area in the graph where the clock speed starts to drop is right around 71 degrees C for the CPU, and once beyond that, the 2700X sits comfortably at 3.875 gigahertz. Let's take a look at a Blender render now, which is our second most demanding workload here. And it just so happens that we've got almost an identical result. Again, once the CPU surpasses 70 degrees C, the frequency drops by about 25 to 50 megahertz. And if I had to guess, this does seem like XFR by definition. The main takeaway here is that despite the max boost clock being listed at 4.3 gigahertz, we really are quite below that in demanding workloads. Okay, but what about something less demanding and something that's actually a real world task? Well, here we're looking at what a full video export looks like in Adobe Media Encoder, and here the clock speed is a bit more dynamic, reaching up to 3.95 gigahertz quite frequently. Also again here, we can see right where the CPU frequency drops by about 25 megahertz after we hit that 70 degree mark again. It does seem fairly consistent now that this is the threshold where XFR does shut off. So keep this in mind for your Ryzen 2 systems. Okay, now this graph is a bit of a mess, but bear with me here. We're looking at video stabilization via the warp stabilizer effect in Adobe Premiere Pro. And the reason that you see so much variance here is because not all cores are being fully utilized. and so 
we do see one to two cores at a time drop to 2.6 to 27 gigahertz. For those cores that are active though, we do see a boost frequency between four and 4.2 gigahertz. This in my opinion would have been a perfect application of the full 4.3 gigahertz boost clock, but unfortunately we aren't quite there. And the only time that we see the 2700X get close to that is when a couple of cores are engaged during a fairly idle workload. Also worth noting here is that there's no obvious drop off in peak boost frequency or XFR, likely because the CPU isn't getting too hot here. What about in games though? Surely we could see a higher boost clock there. Well, the good news is that we can see all eight cores putting in work here while PUBG is in action. And depending on how you look at it, some more good news is that we are getting a fairly consistent four gigahertz performance here for the 2700X. Another way to look at it though, is that this is only about 100 megahertz higher Higher than what we were seeing in our Prime 95 torture test. So honestly, this should be closer to around 4.1 or 4.2 gigahertz in my opinion. And the last application that we're looking at here is another game, Ghost Recon Wildlands. Here we're getting a fairly similar performance to PUBG as you'd expect, seeing as they're fairly similar load, with the exception here that we are seeing above four gigahertz a little bit more frequently. And so I've got a few closing thoughts here. Firstly, in all six workloads that we tested, not in any of the graphs, including in the idle situations before the tests, was 4.3 gigahertz anywhere to be seen. Even in a heavily single threaded task like Adobe's warp stabilizer effect, we did see one core every now and then peak to about 4.2 gigahertz, but unfortunately we're not getting that ceiling of 4.3. In demanding workloads, the 2700X settles right around 3.9 gigahertz if temperatures are in check and about 25 to 50 megahertz below that if not. In the event that the 2700X surpasses the 70 degrees C mark, testing showed the frequency will drop. And since by definition this is XFR, I'm recommending that if that extra 25 to 50 megahertz is something that you want to take advantage of, that you make sure your Ryzen 2 CPU is properly cooled and doesn't go beyond that threshold. In games, you can expect right around four gigahertz and a little bit above that in less demanding titles. And keep in mind, this can all be done on the stock cooler. If you really want that extra one or 200 megahertz more, then an aftermarket cooler is definitely recommended. I'd suggest a 240 millimeter AIO as an absolute minimum if you do want to squeeze everything you possibly can out of one of these eight core chips. And so let me know what you guys think of these tests. Did the 2700X perform above or below what you thought? or right around where you expected. Personally, I would like to see 4.3 gigahertz actually attainable in some workloads. I think at that point, we would be able to justify having it printed on the box. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already guys. And as always, I'll see you all in the next one.